I do not believe the storm outside will be quitting anytime soon. So, how about discussing some more of my research? Not that there's too much else to be busy with. Another creature that has always piqued my interest in Limgrave was that of the spirit jellyfish. Honestly, very odd creatures. Their name comes from some nasty ocean inhabitants that tend to leave behind stings and other burns if one happens to come into contact with them. Though, that aside, in truth, the spirit jellyfish barely resembles them beyond a faint likeness, as otherwise, they are bizarrely different. Typically, the spirit jellyfish can be found among various sacred sites to different degrees, though I often encountered them in Limgrave's many graveyards. Though, the graveyard below Stormvale Castle always seemed to hold the largest amount of them that I have seen. Under normal circumstances, a typical spirit jellyfish is rather placid, merely floating around with very little regard for what happens around it. Not even the heavy rain and winds of Stormvale seem to perturb it. The only thing that seems to upset the creature is that of harm. I have seen many fall victim to the spirit jellyfish for simply poking it or slashing at it out of fun. But any fun is short-lived for as soon as it feels threatened, it turns red. And as if the color was a viral infection, nearby spirit jellyfish will become whipped up into a frenzy, changing what are normally harmless and placid creatures into vile spitting monsters. On the surface level, the spirit jellyfish does indeed resemble many aquatic denizens, but perhaps only concerning the bell of the creature. That in itself is lined with stringy bits of flesh or some form of hair, though they don't seem to induce any form of stinging, and this is where the spirit branches from its aquatic similarities. Below, four massive limbs protrude from the underside of the bell, surrounding the spigot that the spirit uses to expel its concentrated poisons. Its limbs are strange, each is rather large, with an almost meaty appearance to them, with a few small protrusions that often grow out at the end of the limbs. And perhaps one could mistake these as something akin to fingers, though I wouldn't with remorse. On the degree of the spirit jellyfish's diet, unlike that of the land octopus, I haven't witnessed the spirit jellyfish eat anything or even seek out any form of prey. And in fact, even if the spirit kills something, it will merely return to its meandering like nothing had even occurred. Returning to the topic of its red coloring, the spirits seem to stay in these states for prolonged periods of time. Even with the departure of the aggressor, this seems to be due to the red state being induced via a radial area, with spirits sitting on the edge constantly going into and out of this condition as they aimlessly float about. This condition ends when a group of spirit jellyfish stray too far apart, or when they are too few in number, usually as a result of the former. In terms of offense, the spirit is rather limited, using only blunt force and spitting, if that can be used as the right term here, a viscous poison that at least has the potential to envenom something, though due to its small sack it needs time to refill. Its blunt attacks are rather interesting, while mundane. As a spirit jellyfish moves to attack, it seems to almost harden its body in which a portion of the limb becomes coated or becomes more material, turning a dark steelish or black and then proceeding to attempt to strike. And this can apply to nearly any part of the spirit jellyfish's body, though at the time I am unsure as to the particular reason for this phenomenon. The tendencies of the spirit jellyfish to peruse graveyards and sites of ruin is quite odd. I have heard many rumors of the spirit jellyfish being vestiges of those who have passed on, or perhaps even those who have refused to pass on once they have died. There is only one theory I have heard in regards to the origins of the spirit jellyfish, and it was from a traveling scholar from the far north. I believe he referred to himself as one of the stargazers. I am not too familiar with the ways of sorcerers as I only know a few miracles taught to me when I was younger. The traveler said that in his ponderings, that the spirit jellyfish might be the reflections of sorcerers who lost themselves in the pursuit of knowledge as they sought to uplift themselves to a higher plane of thinking. 
He said that sorcerers, from what he could figure, would often replace parts of their body with things that are considered cosmic objects, relating mostly to things called glintstones, with some parts or the entirety of their heads to be replaced with these crystals in order to attain some form of higher thought. And perhaps the most disturbing part of these, or at least the one that chilled my blood, are those sorcerers who would slice open their hearts to replace it with a glintstone. And with these glintstones at the core of their being, many became technically incapable of dying. And with the glintstone of a dead sorcerer being able to fit it into a new body, carrying those memories and their soul, bringing the dead quite fully back to life. But there is a great price to this. He said, as these acts tend to separate one from the natural laws and become perverted in a manner of speaking, causing those who indulge in the glintstone arts to lose what connects them to others at the cost of their humanity in the process in exchange for the possibility to understand an inky black sky filled with points of possibility. But many are often lost in that possibility and become locked to their own gravity, becoming abominations or outright unable to be classified as human. He believes the spirit jellyfish may be one of the many consequences of these acts. Perhaps they were those sorcerers who were unable to find a new form and straddle the line between the current of the stars and the lands between, unable to find their place. Or perhaps they are nothing more than a fragment of a literal vestige of a sorcerer's humanity, being left behind to aimlessly wander the lands, while the mind and soul of said sorcerer travels elsewhere. Or they may even be a in-between state of one's humanity and the possibility to become either something greater or far worse. But ultimately, he was unsure on the absolute truth of what they are. And as it stands, I can only nod in agreement from this conversation long ago. And truly, I have a hard time determining what these creatures truly are. But one thing I can say for certain is they are a phantasmal beast that barely exists in our world and will vanish just as easily.